Well, it was probably President Trump's most important speech of the 2024 presidential cycle. I just gave you quite a breakdown on what he had to say and what the media isn't covering. Coming up in a bit, we're going to have Sebastian Gorka. Dr. G is going to give us the, uh, let's call it MAGA world perspective. Joining us right now is the not necessarily MAGA world perspective, military veteran security expert, Jim Hansen. Jim, thanks for being here. I mean, you're not anti-Trump or anything, right? You're, not, you're not Bill America. Crystal sitting here. No, I'm 100% America first. Right. I just happen to have what some people are considering an apostate view that maybe we should hold a primary to determine who the candidate is as opposed to a coronation. Yeah. Well, and you go a little further than that. I mean, you have expressed that maybe it's time to find another vessel for the America First agenda mm -hmm. and message, right? I mean, you're not. Yeah, no, I, I think Trump has considerable problems in a general. I think he is the odds on favorite to win the nomination. Yeah. I think DeSantis is going to make it very interesting and could win. But I think what we should use that process for is to strengthen both of them so that whoever wins, they are ready to take on whoever the Democrats nominate. Yeah. And I'm going to vote for anybody the Republicans give the nod to as long as it's a sentient human being, unlike Joe Biden. So let's talk about this speech. You saw the speech. Um, it was, Great speech. It was like two parts. So the first part was, you know, classic Trump talking mm -hmm. about the past, what he'd been able to do, saying, um, you know, uh, uh, Trump stuff. He made a pivot, and he started talking about his agenda, what he would do on day one, what he would do as the president, which is very smart, by the way. I think basically sets the tone in the conversation for going forward. Could Ron DeSantis have delivered that speech? Ron DeSantis is nowhere near the political performer Donald Trump is. Trump is just brilliant on the stump. He is great because you feel like he's talking to you. And both the things he talked about from the past and his new agenda it was burn it all down. Yeah. I love that. That to me would be the greatest thing about a Trump presidency again, is he wouldn't make the mistakes he did the first time of not burning it all down. Policy wise, how does Ron DeSantis, or I'm, I'm saying DeSantis just because he's sort of it's the- It's those two. Right. Um, how, policy wise, how does he differ from what you heard from Trump on Saturday? Not much. Yeah. I think the only soft spot against DeSantis is he would be looking at if he got elected, a first term. And so he'd be less likely to do what Trump would do, which is defund agencies, shut things down, you know, Why? take retribution because Why? Why he'd want he to get reelected. I think because then they always pivot towards the center. And maybe he's not. You know, he, as a governor, he has not done that. He has said, I'm going to do it. He has done it. And then he's pointed to doing it. So maybe he wouldn't. How I worry would, about it. How great would it be to get somebody in the White House who is not worried about running for reelection, mm -hmm. who actually has the novel approach that the people put me here to do a great job in four right. years and not to, we didn't elect the guy just to make sure he gets reelected. We elected him to do what he said he was going to do. Let's, that's what made Trump so strong. I think it is. And I think he did that in his first term. And, and I just like to go on record as saying, I think Trump saved the Republic by beating Hillary and appointing three Supreme Court justices who would not take white out to the Constitution, yeah. you know, and just edit it into irrelevance, yeah. okay? I give that to him, I backed him through his entire term, backed him for re-election, and I'm not, not backing him now. But why I just wanna see who's better. Given what you just said, mm -hmm. why doesn't he just deserve your support? Why doesn't he deserve your support for a second term, given he did everything, he saved the Republic, he got his three Supreme Court justices, they got rid of Roe v. Wade. Why is there even a discussion, Jim? He has earned my vote if that's all we were voting on. We're voting on who can beat a Democrat in a general election. And Trump brings too many people on the left to the table and drives too many people on the right away from the table. And that's a, that's a big negative in a general election. One of the talking points that I think maybe Ron DeSantis would differ with Donald Trump on was when Trump said that for four years he is going to implement a policy that divests this nation from China. He mm. basically said, we're going to move our manufacturing out of there. First of all, I don't know if the federal government should be controlling those things, um, but that's good. that goes well beyond terrorism and protectionism. That's, we're done with manufacturing here. How do you tell Apple to do <laughs> that, right? But that that is a difference between DeSantis. DeSantis would not go that far, would he? 
I don't know if he would go that far. I don't buy the the smear right now that DeSantis is a globalist. I'm not saying so, yeah, that. Yeah, no, and, and I don't. I, I, I don't think that. it's globalist or no one's going to go as force far as corporations Trump. from manufacturing in China. There, there could yeah. be some middle ground. Yeah, perhaps. and fair enough. And I don't think DeSantis would go as far. Trump showed even in his first term that he was willing to go hard on tariffs against China yeah. because he saw the danger. That's one of his strengths. He is he is a predator in the economic sphere, and we need that. And so I think he may be better on that, and, and DeSantis may be better on some social issues. And I want to hear them both put their cases out. And I want to make sure that in the course of this, we don't tear each other apart by saying, oh my God, you're not backing Trump as the presumptive nominee, therefore you are the enemy. Yeah. No. I'm going to back him to the hilt if he gets the nomination, and I'm not going to tear him down one bit because the left will use anything we say against him. Well, I think that's a great point. And, and I know that there are a lot of people who are hesitant to throw their support to Trump right now, just like you, and you want to see this primary process go forward, who were disappointed that Trump did not adhere to the same ethic, that mm -hmm. he has gone hard against DeSantis. But he didn't in the speech. He didn't yeah. in front of that CPAC crowd. What does that tell you? I think that was a very perfectly crafted for CPAC and the base speech, because it gave them everything they wanted. And I think Trump's Trump. Trump loves beating people up. Yeah. You know, and he loves counterpunching. He's a New Yorker. Come exactly. on. He it's, gets in your face. He can be in his crude DNA. sometimes. He's a New and Yorker. And I, I think DeSantis has been really smart in the way he's not responded to most of it. Mm. But I think going forward, if everybody can go ahead and say, look, we're going to have a primary. It's going to happen. So if all we do is attack the other you know, people who we know are on our team, yeah. then what are we actually accomplishing? Let's let them argue. Let's let them be strong. No, you know, let's go to the wall. Last time I checked, Obama and Hillary went pretty hard against each other, and Obama still won. And let's not forget, yeah, Kamala fair. called Biden a flat-out racist. Best moment she had <laughs> in the entire primary How'd process. She do? Yeah, I guess she, she's, well, VP. she's VP. Uh, that was more. You know, I somehow think they were able to reconcile. Yeah, that's but, fair. but Republicans can't do that. It well, seems. I think I think there's a difference between having substantive policy agreements and slinging mud and getting childish, which has happened yeah. to you know me. Friends of ours, Kurt, John Cardillo, yeah. you know, Dave Reboy have been smeared by people on the uh, on the Trump team just for saying maybe a primary and maybe some policy talk is a good idea. Seb Gork is going to be coming out here in a minute. Are nice. You? Well, no, I mean, Sebastian's one of those people who are um, concerned mm -hmm. that many political commentators like the ones you just mentioned are uh, perhaps carrying some water for Ron DeSantis mm -hmm. right now and engaging in a lot of politicking on his behalf so DeSantis can keep his hands clean. I, and I think they are at some level. You know, they're not being paid to do it. I know these people. You know, they're not. I've never been paid by a political campaign. Most of them haven't either. They but couldn't afford you, let's there face you go. it. <laughs> the point is, I, I think, and, and Seb and I have talked about this, it's not that you don't want to have those substantive policy arguments. We need them because we need the strongest platform we can and the strongest candidate we can going in. Yeah. So let's do that. No, I'm let's with just you. do it like adults, not like we're on a playground. I'm with you, and I also, listen, I feel like I have a responsibility that goes well beyond um, just what's best for our country, but my primary responsibility on this program and my other media outlets is to make sure that we have a free flow of information and conversation. If I'm too far thrown down with one candidate or the other, then the other ones won't come on this program. I want to be a fair broker when I'm interviewing, like you. Right now, I'm taking the, the Trump perspective interviewing you for the most part. When Seb gets in here, I'll take uh, the DeSantis perspective and challenge him. That's how we should be doing it mm -hmm. on the right. Um, that said, huge mistake for DeSantis not to come here, I think, don't you? I mean, especially since what he chose to do was a big money private <laughs> fundraiser for Club for Growth. That, that's an unforced error. First unforced error I've seen him make. I think it's both. I think, it, yes, because that'll be used against him. But how do you show up at CPAC? and then be either the headliner and keynote, and Trump won't show up, yeah. or you're gonna be the opening act for Donald Trump and then make yourself subordinate. You can't do that. That's, so no, I think yeah, it of course one of you can. That's what he did in Orlando the last two uh, years. He was the first speech, Trump was the last he, speech. He wasn't running for and president then. Right, he's not running now either, <laughs> yes, Jim. And right before <laughs> Trump's speech, they played a montage of like highlights of CPAC mm -hmm. over the last 10 years. Every time he was on the screen, that crowd went nuts. Mm -hmm. He came in second in the straw poll with 20% of the vote. He would have been welcomed with a huge ovation. He could have done that, and I think it was a big mistake. Well, he uh, he did pretty good at Reagan Library. You know, that was a good speech. Yeah, but I, I think it's a fair and, point. And come, who was the last high-profile? Come to the Lions then. Who was the last high-profile Republican to speak at the Reagan Library? Liz Cheney. Oh, geez. 
Sorry, Matt. All right, more to come on O'Connor tonight. In fact, we'll have Dr. Gorka himself respond to Trump's speech, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Coming up next, keep it here, Salem News Channel.